Making an easy art or junk journal can be the most satisfying thing, whether it's a bigger one for prompts like this, or a traveller's notebook size. Having a go-to method for making one makes life easy and so much more fun. In this week's video I'm making a really easy journal with clear steps from start to finish using readily available supplies so that you can indulge your paper passion and make one just for you. And if you are a junk journal addict then hit the subscribe button and ring the little notification bell because I have lots more creative ideas to come. I start by pulling this mix of papers from my stash. I have this colourful page from an atlas a book page with these beautiful botanicals, of course a delicious page of music paper, a page with this text that I'll be using in a prompt, a sheet from a children's book with some really interesting font, a page with a monochrome design, an index page with some very small font, which contrasts with this bold black text. I like the square shape here. Some graph paper and some ledger paper. And some plain paper that I'll use for watercolouring. I have some vintage style scrapbook paper, more vintage paper to come. And I love the colours and design on this sheet, so I'm going to work this in too. It goes with the colours that I'll be using on the cover. I want to use a page from this vintage ledger book. There's something about tearing a page out to use. I really enjoy that. I love it. And for the cover of the journal, I'm going to use this. And it's time to make use of a page from this beautiful book. You may have seen me flick through it in several other videos. and I've chosen this page to use in my journal today. And it coordinates with this flower that will go on the cover. So here goes, let's actually tear a page out. How did that make you feel? And I just want to take a moment to share another beautiful book that I've found. I'm planning on using this in an autumn journal. It's a stunning collection of paintings of birds. You get some beautiful watercolour paintings and the relevant sketches that go alongside. It's called Sketches of Bird Life by C.F. Tunnicliffe. And I'd love to know what you think about that book. Do let me know. So I've trimmed down the papers and the cover and now I want to sort a design for the front here. I'm going to paint this flower using the colours in this rose. And to make life easy I'm using this stamp and a regular black ink pad. And because I want to paint a small image with some precision, today I'm going to use some watercolour pencils. I've pulled out pencils here in the shades Lime, Rose Red and Espresso. And just digging into the row behind, I'm pulling out Orange, Pear and I think that's Cinnamon. There are teaser watercolour pencils and I've put links and a discount code in the description box down below if you're interested. I start by colouring the roses and I want to get some shading on the pot a bit like we did on the lavender plant that I did a couple of weeks ago using the Arteza real brush pens. I want some darker shading here and here on the right. So let's see if we can do that with the pencils. So all I'm doing is adding colour around the edges of the pot. And then using the other pencils to shade in the rest of the image. It's a very relaxing part of the process. And the colour starts to pop when I use my water brush. 
which allows me to accurately blend the colour where I want it, like this. And now we're going to use it on the cover of the journal. I have this piece of vintage book paper. I'm adding some interest by just tearing down this side and sticking it down with a glue stick. And really all I'm doing here is some very simple paper piecing and layering. Tearing down the left hand side of that scrapbook paper. And rounding the bottom right hand corner. And I'm taking the little feature, the focal point, down to size 2. Again, gluing it down, so very quick and easy. And deciding exactly where I want this focal point to go. I feel it needs a bit of extra bling, so as usual I'm calling on my collection of washi tape. And I'm just sticking with the colours and the tones in the cardboard cover there. So I've used some black and fawn chequered washi and just a little bit of bling in the form of a zigzag washi in rose gold. Some at the bottom right and a little bit at the top left there. And that's the cover done. I trimmed the papers down to size earlier so to sew the signature in I just need a ruler and pencil and a ball of string and this needle. I'm holding the papers in place with a bulldog clip and these paper clips. And the first thing we want to do is mark where the holes are going to go. I find the middle and make a mark and also one six centimeters to the right and to the left. And with the papers held in place I'm using the needle to push through to make holes. The dimensions of the papers are eight and a half inches by five inches approximately which is 21 centimeters by 13 centimeters and the cover is nine inches by six inches which is 23 centimeters by about 15 centimeters. And we do the same on the cover. Find the middle and make a mark and measure six centimetres left and right. If you have a good method for making the holes then let me know in the comment box down below. I'm using basic household string to bind the signature. And I measure a piece that is three times the length of the cover. And I start the binding process using the top hole on the outside of the cover. So from the outside to the inside I'm going to bind this in with a figure of eight. Going through the cover first and then through the papers making sure not to pull too much of the string through. And now I want to go through the middle hole from the inside to the outside. And sometimes it's easier just to feed the papers onto the needle individually. Just whatever way works for you. Through the cover as well, through that middle hole. And following that figure of eight, I'm going from the outside in again through the bottom hole. And the final step brings me back through the middle hole 
from the inside to the outside. Do you use this figure of eight method or do you use an alternative method? I would love to know. Drop me a comment down below. And at this point to take the clips off and just tighten up the string. I have two other videos that you might like to see on making really easy junk journals. I'll put links in the description box down below. And also links to a couple of other videos doing flip throughs of completed journals. And I just finish it off by tying a little bow in the string at the top of the spine. And here we have a really easy junk journal ready for me to use in Junk Journal July, which is where we share our pictures of our journals and spreads on Instagram using the hashtag Junk Journal July. So do join me in that if you're interested. I would love to see your creations. And if you have enjoyed this process for making a really easy journal, then hit the subscribe button and ring the little notification bell because I'll be back next week with another junk journal video. Bye.